Hello, my crafty friends. Today we're um, continuing our study on the messianic prophecies in the Bible and how they were fulfilled. And we're working right now through um, the prophecies of Jesus' ancestry. And this one today is about his descent from Shem. And I'm sure you remember that Shem was the oldest son of Noah. And so um, we're going to talk about that some. Uh, Jesus was born a Jew. And um, Luke 2.32 says that he is a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. So um, Jesus brought glory to Israel and brought light and revelation to the Gentiles. If we go back over his lineage, we know from both forecast and fulfillment that he came from the line of Shem. The forecast was Genesis 9.26. And it says, he also said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. Um, this, is, this is the forecast that Jesus was going to come through Shem. The fulfillment was in Luke 3.36, where he gives the genealogy of Jesus. And I'm not going to read all of it, but he starts with Jesus and works backwards. And... Um, and there's a whole lot of names that I would probably mess up. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with verse 36. Um, but this is Luke, 20, Luke 3, 23 through 38. And you're welcome to look, up, look it up in your Bible and read the whole thing. So you can see the whole list. But um, verse th starting in verse 36, it says, The son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahaliel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So, um, so this shows, we, you know, it starts with Jesus and goes back. Um, and then at the very end, it says he's the son of God. So, um, so that's, that's the fulfillment of, of the prophecy that, um, that the Lord was the God of Shem. And then um, this goes through um, something interesting. I, you know, it's been a long time since I studied, um, studied the, this part of Genesis, but um, he's talking about the generations of Shem. And it says that Shem himself may have recorded this entire genealogy. For his life spanned the period covered by it. Shem lived 98 years before, started, you know, his life, 98 years before the flood. And he lived 502 years after the flood. So his life was 600 years. And I'm just going to go ahead and read this because it's kind of important. Uh, it says, these are the generations of Shem. When Shem was 100 years old, he fathered Arapshahad. Two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he fathered Arapshah had 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arapshah had, had lived 35 years, he fathered Sheila. And Arapshah had lived after he fathered Sheila 403 years and had other sons and daughters. So we've gone from Shem living 600 years to Arapshah had living 438 years. And Sheila, when Sheila had lived 30 years, he fathered Eber. And Eber becomes important later too. And Sheila lived after he fathered Eber 403 years and had other sons and daughters. And when Eber had lived 34 years, he fathered Peleg. And Eber lived after he fathered Peleg 430 years and had other sons and daughters. So, Arapshahad and Sheila and Eber all lived um, 438 years, 433 years, and 464 years. And then Peleg lived, when he had lived 30 years, he fathered Reu. And Peleg lived after he fathered Reu 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Reu had lived 32 years, he fathered Sharug, and Reu lived after he fathered Sharug 207 years and had other sons and daughters. 
when Shirag had lived 30 years, he fathered Nahor, and Shirag lived after he fathered Nahor 200 years and had other sons and daughters. So we went from 600 years to a little over 400 years, and now we're going down to a little over 200 years for the lives of these people. You can see the lifespan getting shorter as the as they descend. Um, when Nahor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah. Nahor lived after he fathered Terah 119 years, so he was 150 when he passed away. And then it says, when Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And it doesn't go any further than that. And that um, may be when Shem died. I don't know. <laughs> but but when it says, when Terah had lived 70 years, he fathered Abraham, Ab Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Abram is who we know most, most of the time we think of him as Abraham. Um, but his father, his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. So Shem lived all the way up until Abraham was already living in Canaan. Um, that's kind of amazing, isn't it? We, we don't think about you living to see your children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren. You know, we, <laughs> that's a lot of generations to live to see. Um, anyway, I just thought that was really cool. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And that's Genesis 6:10. Um, and these sons became the fountainheads of the new nations after the flood. Eliminating two-thirds of these nations, God indicated that the Messiah must come from Shem, not Ham or Japheth. It was from Shem that the Jews sprang through Abraham. Um, and then Genesis 9.26 says, um, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. And then it talks about um, God dwelling in the tents of Shem. And um, it says, Blessed be Jehovah, the God of Shem. And God will enlarge, may God enlarge Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem and let Canaan be his servant. Um, and here it says, uh, in the following verse, and that's the may God enlarge Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem. The word he is not found in the original version. Um, somebody added it in. So the real verse reads, God will enlarge Japheth and will dwell in the tents of Shem. And, um, and that shows more directly that Jesus comes from Shem. The final fulfillment of this prediction came when Jesus, the eternal word, was made flesh, having been born of a Jewish woman. And, um, and John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, the name Shem in Hebrew means name a designation subsequently given to him as one of note or of great among Noah's sons. Um, and the, the prophecy that Jehovah would, specific, would be specially the God of Shem was fulfilled in the choice of Abraham and of Israel, his descendants, as God's peculiar people. Shem is called the father of all the children of Eber. The term Hebrews is derived from the term Eber. Um, and Genesis 10, 21 says to Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth, children were born. So, um, so it's talking about, you know, all, he has other children, but the, the father of all the children of Eber, that's the, what, that's, what's important. These are the children that are going to give us Jesus. And, um. I'm going to use the this verse here, Luke 2.32, a lot for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. That's the verse we're going to use for our, um, no, that's too big. 
this will be what we're going to put on our journal page today. Okay, that's not a very good job. Let me see if I can clean it up a little bit here. Okay, now at least I know it's straight. <laughs> I'm not very good at cutting straight, so. And um, I got the, this is the page that we're going to use today. Um, and it's a wall piece of wallpaper. And it's it's yellow stripes, which I thought um, was a good choice because it's, it's light. Yellow, we think of light as yellow. Um, and sun sunshine you know that kind of thing um i have some choices of things out here that i was thinking about using i thought about putting this over the whole um the whole page and then putting a few little butter a few butterflies on top and i do really like that idea and that would be pretty easy to implement but um, I also have these stickers that I got at the thrift store a while back. And I've never used them. And I've never used anything like them. So I thought it might be fun to try them. Um, these are water release decals by Folk Art. Um, well, and these are um, some of their one stroke flowers which I've always found fascinating. Okay, let's, oh, they do have instructions, okay. It says, bubble cut around the printed design, leaving a small border. Do not cut on black line. Okay, well these do not have any lines. Um, gently pull off the transparent cover paper and place the printed side of decal against the surface and press on the surface using oh there's the black printed design okay Ooh, that's pretty I might have to use that too sometime okay so you just gotta go all the way through the instructions before you start <laughs> okay pull gently off the transparent cover paper Place printed side of decal against the surface and press it onto surface using black printed design on the white side of paper as placement. Note, decals are not repositionable once pressed on a surface. That's important. <laughs> Make sure you put it where you want it. <laughs> Wet a sponge or cloth, squeeze out the excess water, and then moisten the paper well over the entire design. Oh, I, I probably won't be able to use this. Um, this on the back because I'm going to wet it down. It's a shame because that's really pretty, isn't it? Oh, well, that's okay. Okay, it says wait 60 seconds and gently peel off the white paper. If paper is dry, re-wet and then peel off. The paper needs to be wet or it will not peel off. With damp sponge or cloth, gently press decal smooth to surface and let it dry. And then it says, protect design and increase permanence with water-based brush-on varnish. Okay, well, we're just putting it on this paper, so I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about it being tough. Um, it does say on here that the decals work on glass, metal, wood, plastic, candles, tin, and paper. So, there we go. And this, I can cut these out and use them, though. We'll definitely do that. Put it in my stack of stuff. Okay. Now then, 
let's kind of decide. I wanted to use this because they looked cheerful. And when I think of sunshine, I think of joy and peace and happiness. And so, um, so we're going to use this. And I'm just going to kind of um, go around them individually here because I'm not sure what which ones I'm going to use and which ones I'm going to okay there's one trying to cut sort of close so that these can, um, I can figure out how to lay them down. I think I'll do these two butterflies um, at the same time. I'm going to definitely put the butterflies and dragonflies on later, not, not at the very beginning. I'm going to do the dragonflies separately. Okay, I'm making a mess here. I've got a bunch of stickers and rarely ever use them. I don't know why I love them um, when I see them, but for some reason I don't really love to use them. So I'm trying to use stuff or get rid of it. And today I'm going to use this <laughs> if it will work. There's always the chance that um, it's so old it won't even work, but we'll see. Okay. It's hard to decide. Let me zoom in just a little bit. I didn't realize how far out I was. Sorry about that. Okay. Maybe like that. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to save these two for something else. And we've got a couple of butterflies right here already. So I'm going to save those to go with that. Then we've got some dragonflies. we can put on here and then our verse right up there and I think that'll be pretty if it works <laughs> okay we're gonna start with um, one of the dragonflies first I need the sponge I've just got this. I hope it's not too rough of a sponge to use. And I've got some water. I'm just going to kind of pour it on it. I'm going to let it kind of soak in rather than adding more water and having to squeeze out a whole bunch of it. I'm just kind of squeezing it 
so that it moistens the rest of the sponge. Actually, probably half the sponge is all I need. Okay. <clears throat> Gotta take that piece of plastic off. Let's do it right here. I don't know if this is wet enough or not. I'm thinking it might not be wet enough. Squeezing that extra water into my, oh, that's probably wet enough, um, into my trash can. It's probably not a good idea, but I know there's some paper kind of stuff in there to soak it up, so. It says to leave it on 60 seconds, so I'm hoping that while I'm doing the other ones, that'll be long enough. Okay, let's see why this one. Okay, well that one worked pretty good. We'll let those sit a minute more. I'm just gonna go ahead and be adventurous and do the flowers. Um because it's gonna have to sit a while and Okay. Let's see how this one's going to do. Oh, good. Yay. pretty happy with that. We'll let this one, that's the place that didn't get very wet. <laughs> Says if it's dry to re-wet it before you pull it off, so. Okay, let's see. Uh-oh. Okay, this one's not working as well.
and let it sit a little bit longer. Oh dear. Okay. Now, we got one place there that didn't work very well. It says to press it down. Oh, I'm making it worse. Okay, don't press like that. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do something. Something there. Goodness gracious. Okay, note to self. The little ones are easy. The big ones are hard. <laughs> okay. I don't think that really got wet enough right in there to stick to the paper. Okay. Hmm. That's kind of unsightly there. Can we put our verse right there? <laughs> oh my goodness. That would fix it, but, hmm. I think the rest of it's probably okay. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put a butterfly right there. So which one of these will go good but still show up? These are some butterfly stickers that I got at um, Dollar Tree. We need something that's a, you know, a size that might legitimately, which might legitimately work. that would kind of go with the size of the dragonflies. I'm kind of thinking this one right here. Let's take it off and look at it. Oh, there we go. See, I can cover them both with that one wing. Okay. Maybe I need another little one. Is there a small one? Okay, we're going to put our verse right here. Maybe right there. Let's see. Oh, here's a little one. This one would be cute, I think. Let's put it right there. And we may put one kind of flying in from over here. Maybe these two little ones. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna use those if we can get the. If we can get it to work.
Okay. We'll let that sit. And I need to, um, I think I need to color this somehow. I'm kind of thinking watercolor would be good. to think. Want something that's fairly quick. And watercolor is not necessarily fairly quick. Okay, these are kind of fast to use. Not exciting colors, but. And they're very dark. Um, don't think I want to use those. I'm going to pause a minute and see what I can find. The nicest watercolors that I own, they're not as nice as they're not professional grade, but they're the best ones I have. So that's what I'm going to use. I decided, um, since we're doing light, that I'm going to do this yellow. bold. It's okay, if the brush is wet, it won't take up so much paint. Okay. Alrighty. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and show you the finished page. Okay. Here it is. And I decided I want to ink it just a little bit. I'm using a blue because I think with uh, a yellow it'll um, I don't know. I just decided I wanted to use blue. <laughs> I actually thought it would kind of look green on here um, because of the yellow paper, but it doesn't. Anyway. There we go. And now to glue it down. I need to do some kind of edging on the page. And since I love copper and it's right here handy, I think that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. 
it's a good thing I'm okay with my edges um, looking kind of distressed and not perfectly even because I'm definitely not getting this perfectly even. <laughs> okay. I thought I was running out of stuff. looks funny you can kind of see the stripes I'll show you in a minute um, through this copper it's like the yellow is um, showing through okay Here we go. And there's our page. A <coughs> fairly successful experiment. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> May God bless you and have a great day. <coughs>